A mutual friend of mine sent £200,000 to a cyber criminal's bank account because his lawyer's email had been spoofed. Domain security is not a joke. Whether you're a small startup or a large corporation, your domain is one of the most valuable assets that you have, but without the right protections, it is vulnerable to impersonation and abuse. And this can have serious consequences for your reputation and your finances. Now this video is brought to you by PowerDMark and I'll be showing you how their tool helps get control over your domains. And aside from the cyber crime angles, there are two other massive reasons why you have to get a handle on this today. New bulk sender requirements. Big email players like Google and Yahoo are tightening down email authentication requirements for bulk senders in 2024. If you don't comply with those, your emails will land in the spam folder. And nobody wants that. And PCI DSS version 4. Version 4 comes into effect in March 2025 and it mandates that you have to have email authentication for businesses handling cardholder data. But those two aside, you've got spoofing, phishing, business email compromise, domain name impersonation or typo squatting, and brand abuse. All of these lead to financial losses, data breaches, and a damaged reputation. All right, so we know why we need to get email authentication set up, but you're probably wondering, how do we do this? That's where PowerDMark comes in. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I only show off tools that I truly like. Now, PowerDMark is all about implementing email authentication and making it scalable. And if you don't know, email authentication involves protocols like SPF, DKIM, DMARC, these verify the legitimacy of sender email addresses. For example, if you're subscribed to my newsletter, you'll see that it comes from newsletter at garyrodell.com. But really, the email is coming from Podia. I log on to Podia, I write the email, and I hit send. They are sending it from their systems. I've just given them permission to send it as me. If anybody else tries to modify an email to make it look like it's coming from newsletter at garyrodell.com, it will not work it will fail email authentication checks. And if you manage multiple domains across different providers, it's a pain, I know, because I do that. I use GoDaddy, Squarespace, and I'm sure there's something else I'm missing. So when I saw PowerDMark, I got pretty excited at the idea of putting all of my SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records in one place and having it push out to my DNS. Now, PowerDMark has a ton of features, but I'm gonna just dial in on a few key ones here. Hosted authentication services, so they will host your SPF, DKIM, DMARC, and your BIMI, the little logo and the tick. They have an MSP and an MSSP program, so if you manage a load of other businesses' domains, that makes it really, really easy to do that. You can white label the platform, so it's PowerDMark, but it doesn't look like PowerDMark. Customer doesn't see that, they see your logo. It comes with multi-language support and an API so you can build whatever you want to integrate into it. It's really cool. So that's enough talk. Let's jump onto the platform and I'll show you what this is all about. Okay, so I've done two things here. One, I've gone and logged in to my DNS settings for a domain that I run, terraline.io. And I've also logged into PowerDMark. As you can see in the DNS, there's nothing here to do with PowerDMark. There's just some basic stuff, Google site verification and some IP addresses and name servers and things. So we haven't done anything yet. When you boot up PowerDMark, you'll arrive at this page and this is the setup wizard. So you just got to follow the guide really. Anytime you have any doubts about what it is that you're doing, there's the help function up in the top menu bar and you'll also see little question marks and tooltips in random places throughout the UI. It's really nice. But I'm going to come in here, type in terraline.io, click next. And the first thing we want to do is configure a DMARC policy. Here you go. Here's an example of a little tooltip. Policy we're going to set to none because we're just going to start off in testing mode and then ease ourselves up to quarantine and reject. We can come in here and tick through these options if we want, but I know that the defaults here are the sort of loosest settings. So we're just gonna carry on and click next. And here's what we have to do. We have to publish a DMARC record. And what this does is this tells our DNS server that Power DMARC is running the show here. That's really all this is doing. It's linking the two things together. So let's copy this and we're gonna go and make a new CNAME record. So add a record, CNAME, Paste that in, copy this one, paste that in, hit save. Updating the DNS, happy days. 
Let's complete the setup. Congratulations. You're all set to receive DMARC data. Cool. Now, if you've ever worked with DNS, you know it takes time for it to propagate. It's like changing an entry in the phone book. It takes a while for that to spread around the world. Same deal here, but it doesn't really take 72 hours like these things say. Let's click validate, see what happens. There we go. Took like 72 seconds. So this is our new DMARC policy here. And as you can see, we got all the green text, no errors found. Happy days, DMARC policy set up. Now we got to do a little bit more. Let's go back and look at domain health. Select Terline. And as you can see, we get a score. This is an F. F is a terrible score. We do have a DMARC record here, which is great, but we've got no SPF, no DKIM, no MTA, STS, no TLS, RPT, and no BIMI. I know that's a whole load of buzzwords, and if you're not familiar with this stuff, go ask ChatGPT to explain these things to you. It's very simple, really, once you wrap your head around it. But it just tells you, go to Power SPF. So let's click that button, and we're going to go across, select that domain. And what we want to do here is add our sending services. So emails that I send from Terline come from Google. So let's just select a service here and type in Google. There we go. And when we do that, we automatically get this new SPF text record created above. What we're going to do is we're going to leave this record alone. We're going to come across to the right hand side into the automatic setup panel. We're going to turn that on, copy that record and put that into our DNS. This enables Power SPF. As you can see, the status is now enabled and that means it's up and running. Now, enabling Power SPF optimizes your SPF records to stay under the 10 DNS lookup limit, which is mandated by the Internet Engineering Task Force RFC 7208. I will leave a link to that in the description if you want to go and read more. But basically, if you go over that 10 DNS lookup limit, it will break SPF and return a perm error. And you can check these lookup results here. You can see it says 4 out of 10. And if we jump back to domain health, you can see that we now have a valid SPF record. Cool. Let's add DKIM. Hosted DKIM. Tear line. Please add the following NS record to the domain key subdomain of your DNS to enable DKIM management for a domain. So the type is NS, new record, NS, copy that value, paste it in, copy this one, paste it in, save it. And we can go on like this. We can just keep going through each of these suggestions, adding in everything that it's asking, and our score will slowly improve over time. Now, I'm not going to make any more changes to my DNS because that would waste your time. I'm going to show you some demo data where DMARC, SPF, DKIM, MTA, STS, TLS, RPT are all set up. BIMI isn't set up. BIMI is the little picture in your email. So whenever you get an email from Google, for example, and it has the Google logo in it, even though they're not in your contacts, that's coming through BIMI. It's really powerful. And you also get the little checkbox, like a verified tick, which is nice. So when you have a domain put in here and it's been managed for a little bit longer, you can see we've got a B plus. Our published DMARC policy is in quarantine mode. So we're starting to lock down that domain. It even gives us here, look, 22 out of 24 actions complete. We need to do these two things to improve security. We got to set MTA STS to enforce because it isn't currently being enforced. It's in monitor mode. And we need to add the image link to the BIMI record. It couldn't be easier. It really couldn't to set all this stuff up. Power DMARC makes it very easy. This is the dashboard. This is where you'll spend most of your time looking at what's going on across all of the domains that you're managing in Power DMARC. It's a fantastic overview. It gives you full visibility of everything that you need to see to make the right changes. We can filter by domains here and change date ranges and things like that. It's really granular. But there's also a reporting function and we can look at DMARC aggregate reports per country, per host, per organization, sending source. It, it just covers everything that you need, honestly. It's incredible. And having this granular level of detail just makes it really simple to troubleshoot whenever you're trying to set these things up. Because 
a lot of complex things are going on in the back end here and you will run into problems, but that's why you have great customer support with Power DMARC. You're not left on your own to try and figure out DNS, one of the internet's most infamous problems. We can also configure something called Power Alerts. This is a alerting mechanism that sends you an email or a Slack notification or anything through a webhook and lets you know when something unexpected is happening within your DNS records. It's super powerful and you won't miss a thing. Here's the API. So this will generate an OAuth token. We can manage your API keys, make a new token, give that to our developer and integrate Power DMARC into any existing workflows so all your tools talk together. I mentioned earlier that Power DMARC does white labeling, multi-language support, and has a whole MSP, MSSP program. This is what it looks like if I was running my own MSP managing DNS for customers you would see this view whenever I log in. How many trials are being run, enterprise trials, B plans are being run, all the different scoring domains that I'm managing, trials that are about to expire so I can tell the sales team to go and touch base, frequent alerts. We can manage all of our customers. We've got all the analysis tools that we have back on the other side. We can analyze individual records. We can analyze all the mail headers. It's incredible what is in here. And we get all of the alerting as well so that we're not leaving clients with a broken DNS for days and days on end with lots of undelivered mail. That would be terrible. So believe it or not, that is a whistle stop tour of this platform. It does way more than what we've covered here. If you really wanna get your arms around DNS at your company or for all of the companies that you work with, this is absolutely the way to go. Link is in the description to sign up for a free trial. Best of luck and I'll see you online.